Hello, <coughs> welcome back again to the second part of my lecture for Class Management Information System titled IT Infrastructure Hardware and Software. Uh, here we were last time when we stopped, uh, we are discussing about Met uh, Metcalf's Law and Network Economics of an IT Infrastructure System. So Robert Metcalf proposes that the value or the power of your network grows exponentially as a function of the number of network members, which is like uh, y equal to to the power of n. For example, if uh, your uh, Facebook account, uh, your Facebook, uh, say, has 8 followers or 8 members, so the value of your network actually equals to y equal to uh, the uh, power of n. So y uh, so 2 to the power of n, which is uh, your member is 8, 2 to the power of n, uh, 8 uh, equals to uh, 256. So the value of your network equals 256. That is how Metcalfe explained on the network's economy. Okay, so <clears throat> next, uh, we, w we couldn't deny the fact that uh, from years to years, uh, as time passes by, we could say that communication costs and the internet uh, bill uh, is declining. So I would say that nowadays uh, it is estimated uh, there are 2.3 billion uh, people uh, that are able to access internet uh, around the world. And remember, uh, the global population nowadays is around 7.6 uh, or 7.7 .7 billion people in the whole world. Imagine <coughs> that if you have a business, uh, you develop apps that you uh, could market to the whole world, so your business or your apps could be sold uh, to almost 2.3 billion around the world because these are the whole market uh, uh, that is available for you over the internet. So that is a very big opportunity for uh, doing business uh, over the internet because so large market number here okay so in recent years Malaysian government for example last year directed uh, MCMC or uh, Malaysian communication uh, committee or SKMM uh, so that uh, it is directing the telecommunication company or known as telcos for example like Maxis, uh, Cellcom, DG and so on so that they must double the speed offering uh, of internet to their customer and at the same time they must reduce half of the price this year uh, in comparison to next year so imagine the uh, direction given uh, by the government so that to make internet faster and yet cheaper okay so for example if the speed of uh, internet uh, for example like uh, cellcom uh, nowadays at say 40 uh, mbps megabit per second so by next year they ex they are expected to double the speed to 80 megabits per second okay and yet at the same time they must reduce half of the price if this year the price is about like uh, 40 rm subscription uh, for certain package per year right uh, next uh, year the cost must become rm uh, 25 ringgit for next year so that is the emphasis given how the companies must reduce the cost and they must uh, yet double the speed okay now we take a look on the graph uh, relating between the number of years progressed by from 1995 to year 2010 and against the cost per kilobit uh, dollar uh, in terms of cost of data uh, communication. If we take a look uh, from year 1995 to year 2005, right, it is about 10 years. So at year 1995, uh, the graph says that it costs around $1.40 per kilobit data. Uh, kilobit means 1000 bit data, costs uh, $1.40. But 10 years later, it merely, uh, in year 2005, it merely cost around perhaps 
uh, 20 cent dollar per 1000 bit data right as i as i had explained earlier 8 bits equal to 1 byte okay so this shows that the significant or drastic reduction of uh, just around 10 years from this uh, $1.50 level only up to uh, 20 cent or even at 2010 it is maybe around 10 cent or even 5 cent per kilobit data so this shows that decline of internet communication cost has been exponential uh, which is declining exponentially just imagine like uh, 10 or 15 years ago if you want to send data physically uh, by using Malaysia Postal Service, right? You send data report from Joe Baru branch uh, company to the headquarter company in KL. Uh, perhaps you send a uh, few pages of uh, physical report with a postal service. Then the stamp may cost you uh, perhaps with that um, middle size envelope uh, two uh, ringgit fifty cent for the stamp and send it to KL. Uh, maybe uh, the next day or the next two days your headquarters receive. However, in this current time, you perhaps just need to uh, digitally uh, upload the uh, report to the Google Drive and instantaneously your KL branch can read your report by accessing that respective uh, Google Drive. So the cost is almost, I would say, perhaps one cent or almost uh, zero, almost free. I would say in terms of uh, the long-term uh, perspective. <clears throat> Class, uh, we are talking about internet speed, right? How fast we share data and let's take a look on this uh, global map as far as internet speeds and its cost around the world comparing many countries, okay? And this is the legend or the scale that is comparing which is the lighter color uh, white or uh, almost pink and later turn red this is the cheapest and fastest and this is the slowest and most expensive red so if you take a look on the globe uh, around many countries uh, we would say that uh, ITIF ranking on internet speed and cost all over the world ranking Japan as number one it means that Japan has the fastest speed interconnection in the world and it costs only around uh, 27 cent dollar uh, for their uh, data transfer right and uh, their speed is at uh, 61 megabit per second whereas japan and the neighboring like korea also double the price but still fast and comparing to the most expensive like in mexico and turkey okay so where is malaysia so we are not in the map yet. So it is out of the point for discussion. Okay. <coughs> Technology drivers in infrastructure uh, and uh, infrastructure evolution. Uh, we are able to share many documents from around the world easily and can be uh, sent from Malaysia and yet can be read uh, instantaneously in the US uh, because we have technology standard. Okay. We share the same platform, the same standard. For example, Microsoft uh, Word Processing, okay, like Microsoft Word, if I edit the document in Malaysia uh, for a journal article and I want to submit into a publisher in the US, they can easily accept my submission in Microsoft Word.doc and they can open it in the US and later uh, 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 offset it, design it, and then integrate into the, their journal publication easily. Right, because we say we share the same standard uh, system. Okay, let's take a look on the seven important uh, main uh, component uh, that make IT infrastructure ecosystem works. It is in the form of computer hardware, operating system, uh, ERP, uh, DBMS database, networking, internet platform for servers, particularly, and the uh, integrated integrator of the system normally delivered by consulting firms like Accenture and IBM okay this is the depiction of the seven components okay first is like internet platform mostly supplied by uh, Unix or Cisco computer hardware mostly supplied by IBM or Dell 
operating system uh, predominantly supplied by Microsoft Windows, okay, uh, Android and Linux. ERP application normally uh, supplied by SAP or Oracle. Networking telecommunication uh, hardware normally supplied by Linux or Cisco. And DBMS and storage database and uh, keeping your data mostly supplied by IBM and uh, perhaps MySQL. And all these, these six components must communicate and integrate it together. Uh, and normally it is integrated by consultant from IT consulting firm, for example, like Accenture and IBM. So these are the uh, system integrator that integrate all these six components so that they can communicate and uh, in compatibility to work with each other. So if you take a look on this all service provider on each component, we could see that which company appear the most uh, frequent as far as the player of each component. For example, here you could see IBM, we can see Microsoft, and we can see still IBM here, Microsoft, IBM, Microsoft, Cisco. Okay, we could say that predominantly IT infrastructure ecosystem uh, uh, is influenced by IBM and Microsoft. So that is the true fact that we can see around us. Computer hardware and platform, either in the client machine form like notebook or PCs, server and mainframes are mostly run on microprocessor and uh, major producer for microprocessor is Intel and AMD. So these are the main uh, producer for computer hardware. OS operating system, you will say at the server level operating system mostly run on Unix and Linux because have it is open source and 35% of server run on window because windows is based on uh, license okay and at the price software application level uh, mostly provided by SAP German company and also Oracle uh, American software company well if you take a look on the uh, our smartphone right in terms of its operating system, I would say smartphone across the world, 80% run on Android and perhaps nearly uh, around almost 20% run on iOS. However, recently we have a newer operating system by Huawei by the name of Harmony. So uh, those are also a new strong contender in the operating system market domain. DBMS uh, mostly supplied by IBM and Oracle. Our storage like uh, hard disk normally uh, produced or supplied by Seagate or Western Digital. And definitely our storage and data from year to year increasing significantly. And it is uh, proposed that for every three years, our information that we keep as storage double every three years. As far as networking company is concerned, uh, companies that provide telecommunication services, for example, AT&T, uh, Maxis, uh, Cellcom, those are telecommunication company. And network operating system, the hardware uh, normally produced by Cisco, Linux, right? So these are part of the hardware in network, mostly produced by big company like Lucent and Cisco. As far as internet platform concern, which is uh, referring to server, our server mostly run on hardware uh, produced by either IBM, Dell, HP. So these are the hardware uh, producer for servers. Okay, in the video clip previously, I have shared you on uh, Google Data Center. So you can have a closer look on the video of this uh, Google Data Center. So predominantly, it looks like this, all racks of IT device, IT equipment, cabling, and so on. And as I said earlier, all these six components of IT are integrated, uh, may, is made possible working together with the, by the consultant from the consulting integrated company like Accenture and IBM uh, Consulting Service. 
So I would say uh, currently IT job is in very big demand due to information age, due to internet era and so on. And uh, companies like Accenture, Global, Infosys, they are all making good money. And I would say uh, best job nowadays in the world mostly related to information system or IT. Okay, on mobile digital platform, smartphone, uh, mostly run on this operating system like iPhone or Android. Okay. And what does grid computing mean? Grid computing is a form of parallel distribution com uh, computing uh, platform in which your communication uh, and processing power is basically shared into a grid of interconnected network in the whole world. For example, Amazon communication power it is distributed to 350,000 processors or 350,000 computers around the world. So that sort of interconnection is called uh, grid computing. Okay. And virtualization is also another uh, trend uh, nowadays in the IT uh, system in the form of uh, simulation uh, for training, for example. Uh, this is all enabled through the IT platform. Last but not least, one uh, hardware platform trend uh, development which is important is known as uh, cloud computing. So in which uh, enabling resources to be shared over a server which is somewhere in the cloud there and it is uh, shared so that many employees could access or use the same particular software without buying each one of them for everybody. So cloud computing is also a strong platform for Amazon uh, business model. Uh, they call it uh, by the segment of Amazon Web Services. Uh, Google Mail, G Drive, uh, Google Meet, and so on. Uh, it's all run on cloud computing platform, including Microsoft Azure. If you are using like uh, Dropbox or Gmail, definitely you are using this, uh, what is called uh, cloud computing uh, platform. In the uh, video clip folder at Edmodo MIS, I also uploaded uh, one new uh, video clip. Uh, pertaining to uh, cloud computing. Uh, maybe you can have a closer look uh, on the video later to have a, a better understanding on what does uh, cloud computing mean and how it works. This is the cloud computing diagram in which linking all the devices like server, desktop, tablet, okay, and it is uh, perhaps relating to your company and your company subscribe to platform services, for example, uh, to keep your email like Gmail, uh, your company also subscribe to database, uh, network, storage. So all these are in the cloud, right? It is. It means that it is stored somewhere in data center in the US or in the Malaysia, in China. So all these data center are incorporating or collaborating with each other to serve the subscribers like companies you and me. So it means that a more efficient resource sharing for many people around the, uh, around the world through network and the internet. Nowadays, energy is a, a big matter, right? Green energy, conserving energy, uh, I would say uh, energy efficient equipment and so on. So the, the, the trend are moving towards green computing in which uh, you still execute your computing, but you uh, you are using lesser power, right? Because to generate power, it needs a lot of resources. And as far as green, uh, green computing is concerned, you could see that if you buy new equipment, electronic equipment nowadays, they have a uh, star ranking of energy efficient, like four stars or uh, five star. For example, you buy a new aircon and it is uh, rated as four star, uh, aircon uh, unit because of its uh, energy efficiency, right? So it is moving towards uh, green computing. And I would say in any nation, like for example in US, uh, at US, 22% of the power consumed by the United States 
are mostly attributed to data centers usage consumption. So that is very power consuming user as far as the data center uh, power consumption. Again, open source software, it means that it is uh, basically uh, free because that's why they call it open source, in which programmer develops certain program and upload it into uh, Linux plat uh, into a platform in which other programmer can use it for free. So that sort of open source sharing is uh, very much promoting the integration of uh, IT devices as uh, this Linux operating system. Okay. Uh, software in the web, uh, mostly we use uh, programming language like Java. It is object-oriented programming. Uh, normally, programmers use this language to integrate a software system, right, to make the software work. And for websites, uh, HyperTap, Hardcap language, HTML, is another language that uh, be used to uh, develop website. Okay. Service-oriented architecture, well, basically, this is a part of in which uh, uh, an architecture uh, serve a software service to user, okay? For example, you based on subscription, okay, in order to get the service. And this is how it is interlinking each other. For example, uh, a car rental company uh, hosted a website. And of course, this car rental company has a hosting server, like a central computer who hosts the requests. And also, it is also linking into their older system. Uh, they are compatible to work each, uh, work each other. And a rental company like Dollar Rent in the US, they have a strong interconnection with the airline, budget company, tour operating system, travel reservation, and also web services side, right? So as such, this all IT infrastructure enable dollar rent to uh, get their potential customer from here and that serve uh, their customer by using their IT infrastructure as far as renting, as far as uh, payment, as far as uh, delivering the rental car for uh, user and also taking back after it is being used. So it's all... Uh, by the means of IT infrastructure. Software, okay, and cloud services. Okay, uh, as far as uh, sources of software, for example, like uh, ERP software, uh, like SAP or Oracle. So these are sources of software we, in which we could see the expenditure or spending on software uh, from year to year, uh, from year 1990s to year new millennium 2011, and now basically total software spending are uh, increasing at almost the rate inclination angle of 45%, right? And uh, a portion of that basically uh, due to outsourced software expenditure in which you engage uh, IT service provider firm to maintain your software, for example, bank, uh, they engage uh, IT uh, system uh, consultant from HP uh, to maintain their, for example, uh, financial equipment uh, at their bank. Okay. Another portion of the total software spending belong to subscription at software as a service, for example, like Google Drive, or if perhaps you, uh, you subscribe to a particular apps and software like Powtoon, uh, those are basically as EAS. So you subscribe the so software, pay subscri subscription as a service. Software outsourcing uh, is basically uh, consisting of uh, mesh apps and apps. For example, if you are using uh, Facebook and you personalize your Facebook account by uh, its features, so those features are basically category for mashups in which you personalize your <coughs> Google, uh, your Facebook account. <coughs> and bottom line is how do we manage uh, this uh, IT infrastructure ecosystem? Who, who govern the IT and who manage the IT infrastructure? 
Like uh, in the whole world, basically uh, IT infrastructure as far as internet uh, control is concerned, it is governed by this consortium of WWW, World Wide Web Consortium. So this consortium govern the internet or control the internet or manage the internet. However, your IT infrastructure, for example, your company or your organization like UTHM, normally it is managed by the servers uh, hosted at IT center, right? Uh, predominantly inside that uh, center, basically the database, the sequential query language and managing its content. So this is how to control and manage the IT infrastructure. So in other parts, uh, in order to use better uh, IT or software resources, it is better parked at cloud computing platform so that everybody could share the resources. Uh, the only need they have is to access to the internet. So in order to make uh, your IT infrastructure investment competitive, again, you have to uh, map it out against the market demand, firm strategy, uh, and make some assessment on your IT performance, including uh, some of them against the com uh, competitor uh, services, uh, and also uh, basically uh, related to your overall business strategy. Okay? Uh, either you want to use Oracle or you want to use, uh, you want to pack it under cloud computing, it depends on your organization, business strategy, vision, mission, and your IT policy. Okay, let's reflect that relationship towards the uh, competitive forces model for IT infrastructure. For example, UTHM. Our university has declared that uh, it is capable of being virtual campus. If so, uh, then the IT center must have a very powerful and efficient uh, enterprise system uh, to manage all these components. Uh, UTHM strategy, student demand, user demand, competitor, uh, the IT technology itself. Uh, you need to use ERP system like Oracle in the IT center. Uh, you need to engage a fast and efficient IT service provider for telecommunication like uh, TM, fiber, or Maxis fiber, and definitely you need a fiber cabling interconnection to have efficient uh, data transfer and knowledge exchange among your business strategic levels. Okay, that would wrap up a lecture on uh, chapter 4, IT infrastructure, hardware and software. So let me reflect back uh, the LO, learning objective that I have explained earlier. I think uh, I have defined the IT infrastructure as far as network, server, uh, interconnection, telecommunication and so on. I have uh, explained about identification and describing the stage of technology drivers and IT evolution, you know, from the 1960s, uh, from the any computer to the client server and later enterprise level and up to cloud computing. Assess the contemporary computer hardware platform, for example, uh, like the server by HP or by uh, Dell and so on. So, and uh, software uh, in terms of uh, enterprise hardware software, uh, SAS, software as a service and evaluate challenge and managing IT infrastructure in the form of who manage and govern IT infrastructure and the internet. So by that, I have uh, completed the uh, learning objective explanation. I hope you could benefit from my explanation and understand well. And that will wrap up my lecture for part two, management information system course, chapter four, IT infrastructure. Uh, thank you for your attention and uh, thank you for your participation and uh, patience following my lecture through the uh, YouTube platform. I would like to thank you again. Okay, we urgent here.